Welcome to this workshop on applying for funding from Orange County Arts and Cultural Affairs. I'm Terry Olson, uh, head of the Office of Arts and Cultural Affairs, and uh, glad to be here and to help guide us through this presentation. Hi there, I'm Trudy Wild. I work with United Arts. I'm the Director of Public Grants and Advocacy, and for many years have worked with Terry Olson managing the arts and cultural affairs grants programs, including this cultural tourism one. Welcome. So let's dive in. It's next slide. Um, to make sure you know, the funding that we have available is from the tourist development tax, the tax uh, that tourists pay when they stay in a hotel. And we get 3% of the first four cents of that six cent tax, or about 2% of the total if you look at it that way. Next. Our mission is to elevate Central Florida's arts and culture to that befitting a diverse world-class community. So that's what we're aiming for with this money. Intended outcomes are to enhance the area's arts and cultural identity, more than just theme parks. Uh, to present quality arts and cultural experiences, and to promote tourism. Tourism is one of the uh, bedrock uh, hurdles that we have to pass in order to be able to spend this money. Just to let you know, over the years, we have funded about $40 million worth of uh, investment in our arts and cultural community. Uh, the past year was $3.3 million. There were 33 grantees. Um, in three different categories, large amounts, medium awards, and small awards, as you can see there. And here's all the groups that have been funded uh, through our program. The total project budgets that are getting funding from this was over $27 million. So you can see our investment is just a small part of the total of what it takes to put on the projects that are being funded by this tourist development tax. There's different kinds of events that can apply. It can be just a one day or a week long event. It can be longer. Uh, it can be a full season. So as Trudy has uh, developed the uh, metrics here and she is good at metrics and, <laughs> and numbers you'll find out 73 percent of all of our funded events were more than six months long so more like a season to be eligible first of all you have to be a 501c3 exempt organization that's a status with the irs or an accredited museum with the american alliance of museums you have to have had one year or more of providing cultural programming in orange county that attracts tourists and your event needs to be done in Orange County. The event itself must be in the next calendar year, but you can include in your budget marketing and preparation expenses that start November 1st. So you got a couple months that can be included in the budgeting, but the event must be in the following calendar year. And they need to be a primary cultural events, not like adding on something to a conference or a professional meeting or something like that. Next. You need to be marketing beyond our local four county area, basically more than 50 miles away. The idea of this tax is to bring in tourists to stay in hotels to replenish the funds that are being invested in this. Also, you need to have a one-to-one -one match. So if you're asking for $50,000 from the tourist development tax, to cultural tourism funding, then you need to have $50,000 dedicated to that project as well. You're fulfilling one of the requirements. If you're a first time applicant, you have to attend one of these workshops. And there you are, congratulations. <laughs> and you must have a checking account with a licensed financial institution because if you're awarded funds, it'll be 
uh, wired directly to your account. Judy, anything I missed so far? Nope, you're good. All right, we'll go on. You have to prepare at least quarterly financial statements, and these will all go to Trudy. She'll be the one, if you are awarded, that checks to make sure that you've met all the requirements before a check is issued to you or the funds are transferred to you. And you must complete an audit um, and form 990 within six months of the fiscal year. But Trudy, everyone doesn't have to have an audit, do they? That's correct. There are different stages. We say an audit, but that's for 600,000 or more operating budgets. But there are different variations of that depending on what size organization you are. And while you let me um, speak about this, I'll say this is one of the trickiest areas as far as what to present and from which time period. I welcome anybody to send me the content they think is right or ask about it or let me look at their content beforehand and I'll share what is the right thing that we need to get into the application? Bless you. Excuse me. <laughs> but the point of that is it has to be timely. Um, yes. Sometimes yes. it can take months and months and up to a year to have completed statements, but that won't work if you want to get funding from us. They need to be up to date. And then you need to be registered with the Central Florida Foundation's nonprofit search website. Um, you have to have a profile on there. So there's some information, and that's actually um, a really great tool for you uh, to see have I done all the things that a good organization should have done. But because it is rather extensive, if this is your first time applying for funding from the cultural tourism funds, and you're applying in a small amount, you do not have to have completed that profile. The next year you will. So I'd get started on it, but just know that it could take you a while to complete all the information needed for that profile. And if this is your first time, first time for a small grant, you don't need to do that. Can I talk for just a moment on that? Mm -hmm. um, small, we will clarify along the way through this whole entire presentation about all the different categories and requirements that are different, whether you're asking for small, medium, and large. But small is the only one that can be exempt for this. And there is actually a little different form that you need to fill out, just one single board of directors form. That's a new form to this entire process because most people complete that on the profile. But this time there is a separate form for that. So again, if you're a first timer, we'll know because you're looking at the application online and I'll be happy to help you get through this part. But for the small requests, that's anybody who's asking for uh, less than $42,000. And if you um, don't know how much you can ask for, there is another form for that that helps you determine based on your operating budget. So again, there's some, some new forms, some different things you need to figure out to where you go based on what your event is producing, attendance, the matching dollars. There's a number of different considerations, but small requests will be exempt from doing this profile to get back to that point. And the profile, just so you know, the, the Central Florida Foundation's nonprofit search, any nonprofit, uh, or like funder can go in and take a look at that. So normally that would have your board of directors there and more information that we can look at and others. So the idea is you don't have to fill it out for any other groups that you're applying for all of that information that's aggregated in one place. All right, next. So we've talked about small, medium and large. And there are some more difficult hurdles as you move up from small to medium and medium to large. For instance, on the small level, you can apply for up to 35% of your prior year's operating revenue. So if you were a group that had a budget last year, your operating revenue was $100,000, you could apply for up to $35,000 this year in the small category. If you wanted to apply in the larger category, um, you could only do 30% of your budget 
it wouldn't make sense. But if you're a larger organization, you can apply for a smaller percent of your budget. The largest category, you can only apply for 25% of what your opening revenue right. was the past year. And there's a, as Trudy said, a form. We like to have forms. We're the government. <laughs> um, actually, Trudy likes to have forms. I like to eliminate them, but we work together. Um, the caps for those levels are in the large uh, request, people can request up to $155,000, medium up to $77,000, and small up to $42,000. Mm -hmm. So there's also an advantage of applying for smaller amounts in that you don't have to score as well as you do for larger amounts. For the large amount, you have to receive a score, 100 of 75. For medium, 70. For small, 65. And these are reduced score levels from what it was pre-pandemic. We know we're still in a bit of a situation where things may not be back to being as rosy as they were or will be, we hope. Um, it used to be 70, 75, and 80 as the scoring threshold in order to be eligible to be funded. Next. We, over the last couple of years, had a COVID question. We've taken that out. So we're just going to talk about some things that uh, are changes for those who have applied before. We want to clarify in our outreach and diversity questions. Diversity means reflective of our community. And the questions will be, what actions are you taking? What are you doing to proactively advance diversity, equity, and inclusion, including in programming, audience, board, and staff? And the scoring matrix for question 8A has a diversity component. The question, describe composition and strengths of your board and project team. And the follow-up to that is let us know what milestones and status, you, you how you're coming in that process of being a board and staff and project that is reflective of our community. This will actually make a little bit more sense when we talk about the matrix. Um, there is a, a scoring matrix that you'll write your grant to, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. It is clarified with some words that speak to diversity within the matrix. So that's a new addition this year. So you'll be able to see that as, as you look through that part when you're addressing that question. You'll be entering the matrix. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, there's a calculation for economic impact that you'll need to do. There is also a study that we'll need you to participate in. Every few years, is it five years, Trudy? Generally five. It's six this year because of COVID. It's more like six we and a half. participate with Americans for the Arts in an arts and economic prosperity study. So that is a look at your organization's budgets, at your audiences, some surveying, um, and Trudy will let you know exactly what you need to do about that. But it helps us get an aggregate picture of our uh, economic impact. For instance, our last one showed that in Orange County, we have an impact of $264.6 million. That adds to our economy. That it's close, it's over 9,000 jobs that are sustained by the economic activity of our arts, our nonprofit arts. This so is very valuable information that you can use outside of this grant, but that's part of the reason we're talking about it here is to make sure you're aware of it. And we will be launching a full um, uh, opening to this in May and slow rolling that in. But for an entire 12 months, we'll be doing survey work related to this. And uh, again, with all of this, if you have any questions, please let me know, because a lot of this information is new to some of the younger and emerging groups. And we want to make sure that you're aware of all the uh, resources that are available to you and as well as the requirements for this grant. And I will say there's, uh, you may be bugged a bunch 
because we're also working on a countywide cultural strategic plan and uh, there will be some folks asking you questions for that as well. Please uh, take a few moments and answer that. It, in the end, it helps us all. Yes, that's true. Want you to know that our application is available in many languages. You can select the language and get it in that language. Can't guarantee how good the translations are, but that is a possibility for you. And besides these workshops, Trudy is available to help. We want to give one-on-one -on -one help with anyone that has questions about how to do this, how to negotiate this process of applying for yes. funding. Next. So reminder again about your financials need to be completed in a timely manner within six months of the close of your fiscal year. And what else in here, Trudy, you wanna? Um, there is a comment around in the middle. It says, reminder about in-person attendance. This is for repeat applicants. So if you were funded last year and your attendance fell short, there was a lot of forgiveness, I'll say, in matching up the projections of what you thought you might do to the actual attendance throughout the years of the pandemic. Um, understood that we were all challenged by that. But as we're starting to return back, we um, still want to continue to look at this. And if you're getting a proposal in, you want to be as realistic as possible. And then when the actual figures come in from your attendance after the event, you want to be aligned with that. Because if you just say, I'm getting, uh, you know, 100,000 people are going to be here, and it actually turns out to be 20,000, then you got a score based on that projection of 20, 000, or 100,000. So we want to make sure you're being pretty realistic and not um, penalizing somebody else who is being very conservative about a, a more realistic number. So the attendance does matter depending on how much you're asking for in the grant and what type of event you're doing. But you also um, have to be pretty close on that and explain what happened, what were your challenges, what situations might have affected that so that we can, the panel can make a judgment about that for the coming grant. Any major changes from what you apply to say you're going to do that's gonna change, you need to submit in writing what that changes, a request uh, for right. it to be approved. All right, mm -hmm. next. Uh, we want people to know about what you're doing. And one of the ways is the orlandoatplay.com website. So you need to list your things there. And since this is about attracting tourists, you need to list out as far as possible. Tourists might be planning at this point what they're gonna do in December. And if they go to Orlando at Play and there's nothing there, uh, at this point they might go, well, I guess we'll maybe go to the beach. So getting the whatever you have as a possibility into Orlando at Play can be changed later, but it's important that it's there for our funding source. And this is year round, but for this money especially, you need to make sure that those are listed. Also want to let you know, our process is a public one. So the applications come in, the advisory council on their own scores and, scores and reviews them. And then there is a public meeting where they can ask questions. At that time, there is opportunity for public comments as well. We have set up some guidelines on how that is to be done. And if uh, people in the public want to make comments related to your application, uh, they need to submit that they're going to do that 48 hours in advance. Um, this, the review panel time is a full half day. And so we need to be prepared ahead of time for how much time public comments are going to take. Just to let you know, uh, 
we did this year, we have a couple times placed some conditions on funding. If there's something of concern about an application, although it passes the requirements for being funded, the council may place conditions on that. Uh, you can calculate volunteer hours as part of your in-kind match. And yeah, that's just a recommendation for the rate that changes um, often. And that's the rate that you're allowed to put in for a general volunteer. If there are others that have a professional rate, say a lawyer's giving you in-kind service that directly relates to this project, then you can also uh, bill at that rate on the in-kind statement of, of your grant. So it's related to whatever the professional service fee is, or at least this one for a guideline for you. And in-kind can be part of your matching funds for the small requests and the medium requests. Also want to let you know that um, if you would like Trudy or I to look over your application before it goes in. We've been doing this for 20 years. We may be able to suggest some things that we think might help you. Uh, as long as you get that to us more than a week before the deadline, we'd be glad to help in that way. Thanks. So reminders and uh, deadlines. The nonprofit search deadline is June 15th. So this is before our application deadline, but that has to be reviewed or looked over by the folks at the Central Florida Foundation before it's um, eligible for us. The application itself is due July 7th. And let you know from July 7th until the Board of County Commissioners approves this in October, there's no lobbying of the advisory council or the board of county commissioners and lobbying is talking specifically about this and 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 your application it's still fine to invite any of those folks to your events to send them general newsletters that are going to everybody just no specific lobbying which is direct communication about this application and your organization and their uh, favor towards funding it. The review panel meeting that I mentioned earlier is September 22nd. It's a full morning from 8 30 to 1 and you need to have someone there to answer questions. It's not a lot of time for each organization. Trudy, what did we have about six minutes? I think it was eight minutes that we do typically, and that allows for a little bit of transition time. So of that one minute would be for the um, introduction or update, complete within one minute, and then the panel has the rest of the time. Great. So after that, the scores are all tabulated, the applications are ranked, and all those eligible, if we have enough money, get funded at the uh, requested amount. There may be one or two that are still eligible above the eligibility scoring, but we don't have money for, and so they don't get funded. And this all goes to the Arts and Cultural Affairs Advisory Council sometime in October. And then it goes to the Board of County Commissioners for their approval. Then you get a contract issued. The project period, I said, starts November 1st, but the event has to be in the next calendar year. The first payment, which is 50% of the application, will come sometime in December or January, if you meet all the requirements. Next. So we mentioned the three levels uh, based on your operating revenue from the year before and your need. Um, you may be able to apply in the large category, but you might not need that much money. Ha, like anyone doesn't need the money, right? Uh, the total funding pool will be over $3 million. Uh, we don't have the exact figure right now. 
And I think we've gone over the rest of this before. So again, in the different ones, there's a catch, cash match and how much of that can be in kind uh, is less for the larger requests and the amount of scores needed to be eligible uh, goes up as you request more money. One other uh, item that's not listed here, but we did mention very briefly, is that attendance also is scaled. So if you have, um, that's not a, how do I say, you get points based on what your attendance is. So there are certain requirements for a large request that you have to have within a, a much higher number of attendees and you'll get a score of one to five based on whether or not you're in the large, medium, or small, and how many you're proposing you're going to have. Yeah, I think we'll go over that when we get to the matrix. Yes, yes. Next. So again, to look at what we are looking for, the largest amount of points goes in that tourism area, attracting tourism. This is your marketing plan, your PR plan, your attendance. That's where you can get the most points. Then quality and your identity uh, are large points as well. So we're looking for innovation and uniqueness and your uh, standing internationally, nationally with other folks in your discipline, the, the artistic, excellent and professional acclaim, etc. And then finally, are you going to be able to carry it off the implementation? Uh, do you have the the, the finances, the operational staff, the readiness to be able to carry off what you're asking us to do. So just one other point on that is that for those who are relatively new, within each of these cat categories that the panel is interested in, there are a couple questions, there's sometimes forms, there's other um, documents that you've provided that all relate to these different areas that the panel will be looking at. So we have an evaluation matrix for each question. So the, um, for instance, there's uh, some questions related to your identity. Um, and to get a five, I know this is kind of hard to see, you need to break new ground and it'd be different from what's been done elsewhere or involved taking great risk artistically. That's a five. A four is a little bit less than that. And so the judges all, the reviewers all have this matrix to look at and you have it as well. So you can write to that. The other thing to see on this, everything is scored on a one to five basis, but sometimes it weighs heavier. For instance, question one has a multiplier of three. So if you, our score to five on that, you actually get 15 points towards the total 100. Whereas the next question is a multiplier of two. Some have one, two, or three as multipliers. So some questions are weighted heavier than others. And you can see this matrix when you uh, go to the website. It's also written into the application so that for every question you'll see, here's the question I'm going to answer. And then you see what the matrix section is that applies to that. So you can see very clearly, if you want to aim for a five, this needs to be the category and the, the type of um, product that you're putting out. If you only really fit within the one or two, then that's what you're going to, that's what your score could potentially be in that area. So you'll see it on the application. There's one question that has a multiplier of four, and that's the marketing and public relations one. And there you want to be very specific. What methods are you going to employ? What mediums will be using? What materials are you using? And what's your timeline of how you're going to execute this marketing and PR plan? Next. Again, uh, some areas are scored by staff. For instance, your match. If you have an event that's going to be in the first quarter of the year, you need to have 100% of your match confirmed in order to get a five. If your event is not until next September, 
you don't have to have as much of that match confirmed to get a higher score. So this is a uh, it changes to based on when your event is and how much you have uh, already confirmed. So in other words, when you're putting down your match, you don't have to have it all confirmed at the time of the application. You will, in order to get the funding, have to get it all confirmed. But one of the go can ahead. I add one, one very important part about that is that when you begin your event, you're planning, making deposits, um, paying beginning contracts. You have to have some of that match money in hand yourself because, as Terry mentioned before, sometimes that funding is a little slow to get through the entire approval process and checks actually out the door to you or uh, deposits into your account mm -hmm. to work with. So you need to have something to get going. If your event is one of the first in the first quarter of the year, make sure that you're considering that what match you have lined up and when those sponsors or contributors are going to be actually paying that pledge. So that all ties into it. And again, I'll help you strategize if you want to uh, come in and talk about that at some point or um, be on the phone about it. All right, next. So uh, we can go over the questions, but the questions are, you, you'll encounter them, but they're questions like, for innovation and uniqueness, how will this be, event be exciting, unique, or innovative? For your standing, how will this event be of interest to colleagues in your field from across the world? So the questions are there. Um, I don't think we need to go through all of them individually. If you have any questions about the questions, feel free to give us a call. So the application is an online application. The website is at unitedarts.cc and you can see there's a thing for applying and you can go to the particular application and um, or you can go to this long address that's there. Right. There's also some application system instructional videos. Mm -hmm. You aren't tired after this video, you can go look at more videos. More. Uh, reminder about the no lobbying once your application is submitted. Um, and let's go on to the next. What else do we need to say about the nonprofit search? Again, Just showing the dates and the links for this and uh, two different links if you're starting or updating. So again, um, just do on the 15th. Of June. Yes. So, um, and Operationally, there are 13 members of the Arts and Culture Fairs Advisory Council. One of them is a uh, Board of County Commissioners. They usually do not participate in the review process, but everyone else does. That's the panel, the review panel. Um, to, again, a reminder that you have to be very concise and succinct in your answers to questions that the panelists might ask because we don't have much time there. Um, they're compiled. And um, of the 12 review panel scores, we throw out the top one and the bottom one, just in case someone's uh, more highly mm -hmm. biased against or for a particular group, kind of helps us, we call it Olympic scoring. And then we average them all. If a number of panelists haven't voted because they have a conflict, if they are on the board of an organization or in any way receive financial remuneration from uh, a group that's applying, they need to recuse themselves and not discuss or vote on that. So maybe some may only have eight votes instead of 12. It's all averaged. So it doesn't really matter. It comes out the same. Mm -hmm. And then, as I said, we fund until we run out of money in each category. And the, the funds are divided up for the three categories in relationship to the amount of requests. If there's $5 million worth of requests and 80% of them are in the large category, they will have 80% of 5 million put into their pool. So the chances of, if we don't have enough money for everyone that's eligible, the chances of being at the bottom and not getting funded are the same whatever category you're in. 
and it the final decision is with the Board of County Commissioners. They usually accept whatever the Advisory Council proposes to them. Okay, next. These are our current Advisory Council members, although there will be some changes before this fall. Um, some things to keep in mind. Trudy, do you want to talk about insurance? Sure, I'd love to talk about insurance. Um, we have a slight change that could affect some of the existing grantees for this. And if any of you are already operating support grantees with United Arts, you're aware of this, but for new or um, uh, emerging organizations, the United Arts requirements have been really stripped back. They used to be requiring the very same thing that Orange County required and we had to add United Arts Grant onto Orange County's grant and then factor the employee dishonesty based on that. So there was a pretty high bar and a high financial commitment. Still, um, the Orange County mandate is in place that you have to have at least commercial general and your business automobile liability. And of course, workers comp as it's um, required by the state in business. But we have, um, allowed that the employee dishonesty is not mandated this year. So it's still considered a best practice. We would uh, encourage you to keep that for your own risk, but it is not absolutely required by Orange County anymore. And for United Arts, these are pretty much stripped away for only commercial general liability. So uh, if you have any questions on this, consider, look at your insurance, but these are the requirements as listed here for engaging the contract. You don't have to have these in place at the time of application, but if you are indeed awarded the funding and you accept the contract, you will need to get these in place and we can discuss it at that time, but you need to be aware that there will be some costs involved with getting these for your company. So you want and to have that budgeted. That's correct. And when Trudy is saying for United Arts, if you're applying for another funding directly from United Arts, not That's the right. tourism. They have requirements as well. We try to kind of keep them matching, but uh, there's more than one place where you can apply for funding. Today, we're focusing on the culture tourism funding. That's right. Next. There's some acknowledgements. Um, some folks who've gotten funding a number of years are using an old logo. You need to um, know that we have a new logo for that needs to be put on your materials and the credit is this project is funded in part by orange county government through the arts and cultural affairs program mm -hmm. reminder to get listed your events at orlando at play and really encourage you to take good photos and send them to orlando arts magazine for publicity mm -hmm. there your events plan on uh, allowing Trudy and Terry, the two of us, to have comp tickets to come and see what you're doing. We're the staff people that report to our advisory council. And please invite all the Arts and Culture Fairs Advisory Council members to your events. We encourage you to invite all elected officials that relate to wherever you're at, your city, your county, your state. Uh, the more that elected officials know about what you're doing, the more likely they will respond when you ask them for some funding. Next. The payment schedule, as I mentioned, 50% comes when everything's in place and the contract's signed and United Arts has received the money from Orange County, usually by December, maybe January. Uh, there's a Second payment of about 40% somewhere along the line when you've got uh, your match in place and, and various things. And the last one comes after you send in your final report, the final 10%. Next. So <laughs> just some tips for writing the best grants. Obviously we want to fund projects, but the only way that we know or the reviewers know about that is the writing. So you have to have a great product, but you have to be able to communicate it well in order for them to know you have a great product. So 
Look at what the matrix is for scoring. Write your answers to the questions so they relate to that. It's always great to have somebody else look at this. Try not to be doing this at the very last minute all by yourself. Yeah. Um, write your answers ahead of time. It's great if you can give it to somebody who doesn't really know that much about you or your organization and see if they can understand what it is you're saying and, and what those answers are in relationship to the questions. Also, make it look good. Correct your typos and grammars. Be as succinct as possible. Going on for boastly about many wonderful things that you're doing and saying more and more doesn't help. Better to say, we have been told we're the best in the world <laughs> um, by the head of the organization for our industry. Things like that. Just uh, the more succinct you can be, the better. These reviewers are spending about 40 hours reviewing about 30 of these applications, which are pages and pages long. So you don't want to put them to sleep. Um, using headers, breaking up paragraphs, bullets, all that makes it easier to look at. And the more specific you are, the less generalized, like, it's really good, doesn't say anything. Be really specific. You are able to come in and review some of the high scoring applications from before. So you can see what others did that worked. Again, just allow enough time, plan ahead, and feel free to ask for help. Some other resources. Trudy, you want to tell them about this? Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, United Arts offers a number of grants, as Terry um, implied. And so we have, a, they're in various states of implementation, review. We're trying to make sure that we're offering the greatest amount of money for the greatest impact with the least amount of uh, hassle, I'll say, for your organization. So we're trying to make sure that they are open to everybody that we can. There are a number of them. I won't go through all of them right now. And periodically, United Arts hosts what's called a UA 101 workshop that is kind of a walk through all of the different grant programs and resources, arts education, gives you a look at uh, the different services that we can provide for you or connect you to. And, and then the next uh, one will be in July? That's right. That's what we're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. Great. Next. This is a current grant. This is up right now. If you're just starting into fund, uh, fundraising or new development person, <clears throat> and project grant is one of the stepping stones, let's say, to getting into a regular operating support cycle. So as you grow, you'll start out with first either a diversity grant or a project grant. And once you've had at least one year of that, you can get into the um, operating support arena. So these are starting at $3,000 or, or up to $3,000 for this grant program. There's a grant due on, um, that does not look like it was updated, my apologies. It is May uh, 8th that that is due on a Sunday coming up soon. So I apologize that that isn't updated. But those it's happen on website. once a quarter. If they miss May, there's another one in the fall. Uh, at least twice a year. Okay, twice a year. The there's also the state of Florida uh, applications. There's a June first deadline and a September first deadline. Look, take a look at those and see which one. They also offer workshops on how to apply for funding from them. The Awesome Foundation, Orlando Chapter has started back up. It gives $1,000 away each month to some person or project that will add awesomeness to the universe. So this is for something new and unusual, surprising, um, maybe something on the street where people will go by and go, oh, that's awesome. Um, it's real easy. It's four questions. What do you want to do? 
how will the money be spent? Who are you? And how will add awesomeness to Orlando? It's also, it's also one of the few places that an individual artist can apply to. Um, right now, there aren't too many programs that support individual artists, but this is for an idea maker and somebody who wants to, you know, find a $1,000 to support what they're doing. It's not going to, like, help you go to a workshop or um, get new equipment. It's very centered on what it'll do for the Output. general community. Mm -hmm. When we have money, and maybe this year we will have enough money, we also have a cultural facilities uh, grant and the application for that is due usually in January, February time period mm -hmm. uh, for up to a half million dollars. It's a dollar for dollar match and it's for construction, renovation, equipping, uh, acquisition, bricks and mortar kind of stuff. And there are very strict eligibility um, requirements for this because you either have to be a nonprofit museum or have a city or county owned or state owned property that is uh, leased, subleased to your organization. And when we have a lot of money, which I don't know that we will, we have a blockbuster fund. If you're planning some huge event, it's going to be able to attract 100,000 people, and it's going to be able to be something that lots of arts organizations can participate in, provide collateral programming. That's what the blockbuster fund. We've only funded two in our 20 years. Um, so uh, talk to us. It's a little different process. There's not a particular application it's like shark tank where you have a proposal you come to the people they talk to you and might say well, well maybe we'll invest a little bit here or if you change that we'd be interested it's it's looser but it's for big events also we have put up a calendar throughout the year of funding deadlines so uh, you can go take a look at that and go, oh, what is this? There's the Dr. Phillips Foundation application deadline coming up next month. Maybe I should check that out, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That's a great tool for anyone who is trying to keep track of grant writing for an organization and wants to make sure they've got their deadlines. Next coming up in um, June 1 is the big one for the state, for all state grants. Next. Orlando Arts is our community-wide magazine about the arts. So make sure that you get information there. They do a calendar listing, but what's even better are little articles about artists or an unusual arts activity that's coming up. This shows the breadth of what's going on in Orlando, whether it's individual artists, places, organizations, events. Um, Cindy LaFrance does an amazing job of editing this magazine. And it's, um, it's, it's just something I would strongly encourage you to read, pick up, donate to United Arts and get a free copy if you give more than $50. And uh, definitely keep Cindy in touch for any major um, profiles, new artists, new concepts, organization, items that you want to have her consider for editorial. And also the calendar content that comes from this is drawn from the Orlando at Play. So make sure that your events are listed and periodically we pull that information down to publish in the magazine itself. So do feel free to get a hold of Trudy. Her assistant is Luke. Uh, the person at Orlando at Play is Peyton. Yes. And those are some contact information for you. I've listed also a new address on here, which um, is Pasadena. It's right next door to our current building. And this is going to be our outreach office uh, in short order will be in that place. And it will actually have outfitting for a, a desk, a grant uh, visitor type of space 
and some meeting areas in there, uh, we'll be happy to reach out and have you come stay with us, look through a grant, look through prior grants, work on an application. We'll have a computer system you can work there and opportunity to, to um, have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time. If that's something you're interested in, please don't just drop in, but make an appointment to do so to make sure that we can handle your request. And if you have an antique phone, you could use that. <laughs> we need a new icon there. <laughs> All right. That's Next. funny. So there you go. Hopefully uh, we haven't confused you too much. I've given you some insights into how to apply for cultural tourism funding and maybe a little bit of information about other funding sources. We wish you the best success in providing our community with the delightful arts experiences, arts and cultural experiences that you have a passion to present. Thanks. Thank you.